Greetings YouTube. Today will be an unboxing and a review of the Unit T 30 volt 5 amp Chinese power supply. I picked this up off eBay for about $70 from uh, seller City Green and uh, let's open it up and see what we got. There's nice retail packaging. Hmm. Owner's manual. Ooh, that's not good. Hmm, interesting. And well, in the ad, it was advertised as uh, 110 volt, but uh, well, we'll have to we'll have to see about that. There's a setting in the back supposedly to change the voltage. Um, yeah, looks like there's the uh, 110 230 switch. Came with a warranty card. Uh, looks like it needs to be mailed to. To Hong Kong, so uh, don't know if I'll be sending that out, but uh, I guess that's it's promising. Um, I just used a regular PC power cord since uh, the one I came with is not for America. Let's just uh, check her out here. Yeah, I went ahead and uh, set the uh, switch in the back to 110. Hmm, hear the fan come on right away. Uh, now it's time to uh, give us some testing and open it up. Now, the first thing I did is took a sharpie and, and marked where the arrow should be, uh, just to, to visually give you a point on, on where it's at. So, right in the middle is your 15, all the way up is your 30, and all the way down is, well, with the fine down too, you get your zero. Uh, it actually has a maximum with the fine up of 30.4, so not bad. Pots feel good. Uh, yeah, they should really just put an arrow on there. I don't know why they don't. It sure makes it a lot easier. Just visually put it where you want it. Uh, I mean, I know it's got the display, but yeah, it's just nice having it. Now I chose this Chinese model over the normal Amazon, eBay, uh, power supply you see everywhere. I, I chose this one over that because it's it's a little bit more compact. Uh, desk space is, I need all I can get. Um, plus with these, there's gotta be several different manufacturers and, and hundreds of labels, brands that are put on it, and you really don't know what you're getting until you get it. Where uh, With this one, I just noticed it was just made, uh, labeled as, as Unit T, um, and I didn't see them rebadged or renamed. It looks like it's just, this this is what you get, and this is what it is, and uh, uh, there's no surprises once you get it. Um, so on to next, let's let's do some testing. One of my main concerns with buying the inexpensive Chinese power supply is, is it going to wreck what I'm working on? I've seen some of them have some pretty nasty spikes on, on power up and power down and power cycles. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this one, I don't have an oscilloscope handy right now, but I'm just going to uh, run 10 cycles with the voltmeter and just see if if we can get any any spiking at all, anything above five happen. Well, there doesn't appear to be any any nasty spikes. Um, at least that my voltmeter can see. Still not getting anything above five. Uh, nothing nasty here. It's pretty clean so far. Uh, again, we'd like to see it with an oscilloscope. Um, usually the Chinese power supplies are pretty good with Ripple. Um, and this one looks like uh, it's, it's behaving. Um, that's nice to see. good so far. 
fan noise is reasonable. That's another one of my concerns. Uh, some of the Chinese power supplies, they, uh, the fans just take off screaming at full speed as soon as you turn them on. Here I've had an opportunity to hook it up to an oscilloscope to uh, check for any uh, power surges on, on power up and power down. There's a little artifacting here which is actually coming from the camera. It's, it's not showing up on the actual oscilloscope. But uh, I'm going to run about 10 power up, power down cycles and see if, see if we get any nasty spikes or jumps. Looks good at 5 volts. I'm just going to bump it up to 12 and try again. Perfect every time. For a load test, I'm going to use my IMAX B6 charger set to 5 amps. Uh, but before I begin, I'm going to take a reading of the heatsink temperature uh, to get a starting point. Uh, looks like we're at uh, 36 degrees C. I'm going to let this run at 5 amps for about 20 minutes and uh, and see how hot it gets. And uh, this should uh, jump up. Yeah, 5 amps. So it's right around in there. 4.6. Should run it pretty hard. Uh, I'll check back in just a bit and we'll see how hot we get. Just got done running this at 5 amps for 16 minutes. Um, give the uh, temps here on those transistors a check and oh, back down to 46 it looks like it. It did spike up to 70 while while it was while the battery was charging at uh, 5 amps, but it already cooled back. It's cooling back down quick. Okay, it's been going for a while now between 4 and 5 amps. I'm going to take a, another final read. I think it's about as hot as it's going to get right now. And uh, yeah, we got up in the 70s it looks like. Good spike to 74. Yeah, it's getting a little warm. It's kind of kind of hot to the touch, which is uh, I put that warning label there. For this test, I'm going to max out its power. Have an old dryer heater where I found where it pulls exactly five amps, and I'm just going to let it run, just let it cook at its full power. Take a starting temp. 34 degrees. Let it sit. See what it does. It's been running for about 15 minutes at its full 150 watts. It's 30 volts, 5 amps. Uh, check the temps again. It's still in the 70s. Um, what I'm going to do now is turn the voltage down and uh, check the temps again. Okay, so I turned the voltage down to 20 and I readjusted uh, where it's grabbing on the coil to pull the 5 amps again. I'm going to check the temps again on the heatsink right under the, right on the transistor. We did get a little hotter. Um, uh, I'm trying to kill it and it's it's just keeps on going. Uh, one other thing to take note of is the uh, the power cord. I know the socket's a little loose. Uh, it doesn't take much to pull it out so that's just something something to note. I don't know if maybe it's the cord but it's probably the socket. I did try another cord and it was loose also. Now there's only one thing left to do. Take it apart! Now that I've had a chance to, to look it over, I kind of have mixed feelings. Uh, there's no no thermal protection anywhere. There's nothing on the main power transistors, nothing on the transformer. Uh, so there, there is no way for the fan to speed up and slow down and no way for it to shut itself down if it were to become overheated. 
Um, but I guess I, I should have known better in the ad. It only lists it as overcurrent protection and short circuit protection. It says nothing about thermal protection. Uh, but the main the main power transistors they are a uh, D1047, um, which according to the spec sheet here, uh, rated pretty well for this. Um, 12 amps a piece, and there's two of them in parallel. Um, total power dissipation 100 watts. Uh, temperature 150C. Um, so it's it's fairly well overbuilt. Um, and uh, the heat sink here is it's efficient and it's not it, it's efficient for saving space because uh, they don't have a separate heat sink for the transistors they just use the back plate um, it doesn't really look like aluminum uh, but my magnet doesn't stick to it uh, it's painted whatever it is but uh, it seems to work it, it did dissipate the heat quickly after a good 5 amp draw. Uh, the rest of it looks pretty good. Um, not great, but acceptable. There's, let's take a look at the caps here. There is one nipping, which I don't know if it's real or not, but uh, the rest of the caps are kind of eh, Chinese sounding. You got some Chong X here and there and some other ones I never heard of before. Um, yeah, not terrible. Might have to replace them down the road. But uh, overall, the control board looks pretty nice. There's some uh, little processor hiding down in there. A lot of surface mount on the display board. Uh, let's take a peek in there. Yeah, not bad. I mean, um, I would like to see the bridge rectifier on a heat sink. It's just, it's just floating in the air. Uh, usually, bridge rectifiers are pretty tough little buggers, though. But... Uh, I still would have liked to have seen them put that back here on the heatsink, but uh, overall, uh, for what I paid, I'm, I'm not not dissatisfied. Uh, I think I think it'll be good as long as those uh, output transistors behave and never short out and blow up whatever I'm working on. Uh, I think we'll be all right. Now to re to wrap this review up, I was a little disappointed to not see any kind of thermal protection. Uh, no variable fan speed, uh, but it did prove it could reach and exceed its full rated power of 150 watts. Transistor should be good for 200 watts. Uh, under full load temps would get mid 70s. It did spike to 80C for just a little bit. A couple improvements I'd like to see would just be arrows on the knob, something simple like that. Uh, you could see the voltage, have an idea of the voltage before you turn it on. Maybe a current check button you could push to see what the current is set to would be nice so again you don't have to load it up to see what it's set to I'm, I'm not a fan of shorting out the outputs to see your current setting and myself since I do a lot of automotive work it'd be nice to see like a uh, 12 volt lockout style or a, a max of uh, 12 volts or 13.8 or 14.4 um, but on the good side it is compact uh, reasonably priced uh, 70 75 dollars around in there i have seen it as high as 200 i wouldn't pay that but uh, it does have a quiet fan it is nice looking and a good fit and finish